Hey friends and happy Saturday. I am just here with another really quick uh, thing that I wanted to share with you today. Another little tip about studying scripture. And the importance is that I want to emphasize today, the importance is on looking up different translations. And I want to show you how important it is to do that by an investigation in the book of Acts. Now, this morning I am in Acts chapter 9, and I just want to show you the significant difference difference is that is found in different translations of the Bible and how an important uh, thing it is for you and me as believers to look it up into multiple translations as often as we can. So I was in Acts chapter 9 and this is the story of Saul's conversion. So we know that Saul is Paul in the New Testament but he was named Saul when he was a persecutor of Christians and so he was he was persecuting Christians, he was trying to kill Kill, uh, Christians. He was killing Christians, as a matter of fact. And he, in chapter nine, we find that he had gone to, um, he had requested letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus. And what he was asking these leaders in Damascus for was for permission or cooperation with him to bring back anyone that they found who was a believer and return them back in chains to Jerusalem in chains. And so he he is persecuting Christians and he's on his way um, to Damascus. And, and the scripture says in the, in, in the New Living Translation, it says that he was on his way to Damascus on a mission. I love that. In verse 3, it says that he was on a mission. And it says that a light suddenly came down from heaven. It shone around him. And in verse 4 of chapter 9, it says, He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Now, we've probably heard this passage a bunch of times before. Um, we've probably read it in multiple uh, different scenarios. We've probably heard maybe sermons about it or read books or we've read this uh, scripture many times before. Um, but then look at chapter, or I'm sorry, look at verse five um, that says, um, and, and it says here that this is Saul talking and he says simply in the New Living Translation, it says simply, who are you, Lord? Saul says, and the voice replied, this is still part of verse five. It says, and the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Then in verse six, it says, now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. Now face value, of course, we know that this is fine. This verse is great. We understand it to mean that Saul was saying, who are you, Lord? Like he heard this voice and he's like, who are you? And a voice from heaven that was the Lord said, why are you persecuting me? But it goes even further than that. When we read in the original text, the King James text, and actually I'm reading out of the new King James version, it says this. Now this is verse five and six combined. So let's go back and read it in the New Living Translation. It says, who are you, Lord? Saul asked. And the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go to the city, and there you will be told what you must do. In the New Living, or I'm sorry, in the New King James Version, it says this. And he said, who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. So he, trembling and astonished, so we're talking about Saul, he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? The Lord said to him, arise and go to the city that you will be told what to do. Isn't that different? I absolutely love this. And it's the only version that says it differently that it actually adds the line that Saul said with trembling and astonishment. He says, Lord, what would you have me to do? And this is just one of those examples where we can be reading something and we think we understand the meaning of it. And for the most part, we do understand the meaning of it, but it's not the full story. The full story was that he added with fear and trembling, with this astonishment and this actual fear and reverence of the one that he stood in front of and asks, Lord, what would you have me to do? I remember when I read that and I was like, wow, that is so awesome. It really leapt off the page at me. And I began to, to see it differently because Saul was 
being confronted by Jesus in this moment. He was being confronted for the, the sin that he was involved in, the persecution of Christians, the one that, that would go on to write a third or more of the New Testament. And we have here in his conversion, him saying, I see you, I recognize you, I am in awe over what I am seeing in front of me, and I am hearing you loud and clear. Lord, I'm here. What would you have me to do? And that was just one of the places that in Scripture I highlighted, and I wrote actually a sticky note in my Bible, and I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? What an awesome thing for us to charge into this weekend. Lord, what would you have me to do? Who would you have me to call? Who would you have me to encourage? What would you have me to do for you? What should I be reading? What should I be studying? Where should I be going? What direction do you want me to go in my life? What an awesome question to wrestle through as we approach our days. So I just wanted to encourage you with that today and then to also show the importance of looking up the scriptures that speak to you in multiple translations because really there is a wealth of information in those verses. There's a wealth of just a wellspring of wonderful things that awaits us as we look up those verses in various translations. We never know how God is going to use those to speak to our hearts. I hope this has encouraged you today, and I hope that you will have an amazing Saturday. Bye, friends.